Welcome to Group B14's presentation on rectangular microstrip patch antennas. For the next few slides, we're going to discuss the history, the application, the pros and cons, and the various functionalities of the antenna. While the first ideas of microstrip patch antennas can be traced back to the 1950s, it's around the 1970s that the microstrip patch antennas gained considerable attention. In modern times, microstrip patch antennas gained many developments over the years and have several benefits over other types of antennas, not limited to, but including size, weight, ease of mass production, and cost. These benefits are why microstrip antennas are popular today. The most commonly used form, of course, is the microstrip patch antenna. Microstrip patch antennae are fabricated in a method similar to etching printed circuit boards. In fact, they use the same base materials and chemicals to the printed circuit board. The raw circuit boards, i.e. the copper clad boards, are first cleaned with solvents are the, and are then dried. A photoresistive coating is then applied to the copper plating, which, are, which is developed in such a way that during the next step, etching, the copper under the photoresistive coating is not etched away. Then, the circuit boards are then placed in a solution, typically ferric chloride, that etches away exposed copper plating. The now fabricated antennae are then mounted on a sheet of metal that has been designed and fabricated to act as the ground plate. Because these methods are similar to existing methods of uh, printed circuit board fabrication, it allows microstrip patch antennae to be easily and cheaply produced. Microstrip antennae are used wherever small, lightweight, or cheap antennae are needed or are highly recommended. Commercial uses of microstrip antennae include wireless communication systems, satellites, biomedical devices, and etc. The type of microstrip antennae most commonly found in cell phones are planar inverted F antennas. Microstrip antennae are used extensively. For example, biomedical devices found in the human body, embedded electronics, system on chips, and etc. Microstrip antennae also appear in many places in the military, such as missiles, aircraft, radar, satellites, and etc. Over the years, there have been many conductor shapes proposed and investigated for microstrip patch antenna. Diagrams are shown in the picture. The first one is the rectangular and square patch. They are the most utilized patch conductor geometry. Rectangular patch tend to have the largest impedance bandwidth simply because they are larger than the other shape. And they can be used to generate the circular polarization. Circular and elliptical patch are probably the second most common okay, shape. Okay, here's the measured performance and uh, there's an example on this slide. Uh, new techniques have been employed in both the modeling and the measurement of microstrip transmission line structure. The modeling employs a dual potential approach using finite element analysis is to derive exact bounds to the microstrip curve. <laughs> from the other limits to the theoretical as parameters of the impedance line structure have been derived. The measurement of the as parameters were performed on an automatic vector network analyzer using an on-chip calibration method with microstrip calibration pieces. Theoretical results are presented for the cut structures on both the lumina and the gradient lines now. The measured results are presented for the alumina structure. Other bonds for the measured results have been derived from the applicability and the agreement between theoretical and the measured results is reasonably weak. The major disadvantages of microstrip antennas are lower gain and a very narrow bandwidth. Microstrip patch antennas have some disadvantages of low efficiency, narrow bandwidth of the central frequency. Millimeter wave technology being an emerging area is still much undeveloped. As microstrip antennas have been found a wide variety of application areas, a number of technicals are involved to improve its limited bandwidth.
A good approach to improve the bandwidth is increasing the thickness of substrate supporting the microstrip patch. However, problems exist on the ability to effectively feed the patch on the thick substrate, and the radiation e efficiency can degrade with increasing substrate thickness. The dielectric thinning of a microstrip channel affects both its radiation pattern and impedance bandwidth. As the increase in dielectric constant of the substrate results in decrease of the antenna bandwidth, which increases the factor of the antenna and therefore decreases the impedance bandwidth. Larger bandwidth can be achieved by loading slots within the patch of the antenna and with different shapes, arrangements and sizes. The effect the effect of these technicals on increase in the bandwidth is more than using the other technicals to realize compact MSAS. There are several technicals such as higher dielectric constant substrate, a slot cut inside the patch for broader bandwidth, thicker and lower dielectric constant substrate, and a single slot cut. There are several design considerations to improve the bandwidth limitations. Step 1. Substrate selection. The first step in the design is to choose a suitable dielectric substrate of appropriate thickness H. A thicker substrate serves as mechanically strong, but it will increase the, ra the radiative power, reduce the conductor loss, and improve impedance bandwidth. Step 2. Width and length parameters. A larger patch width increases the power radiated and thus gives decreased resonance resistance, increased bandwidth, and increased radiation efficiency. It is good to choose patch width that will be greater than patch length. The general consideration is the ratio of width over length is between 1 and 2. In case of, mi of microstrip antenna, it is proportional to its quality factor. Bandwidth enhancement technique. There are many ways to improve the bandwidth, which is mainly controlled by the characteristics of parallel plate transmission line. The bandwidth can be increased by increasing the thickness of substrate supporting the microstrip patch by the use of high dielectric constant substrate, by increasing the inductance of the microstrip by cutting holes and or slot thinning, or by adding the active component to reduce the voltage bending width ratio. The first approach done is to design a rectangular patch antenna with an operating frequency of 2.4 GHz as it has a low return loss such as frequency on taking alpha 4 as the dielectric substrate, which has a dielectric constant of 4 and by varying the thickness of the substrate from 2 mm, 3 mm, 4 mm, the bandwidth variations are observed to be increasing and the radiation patterns are observed along with bandwidth. For this configuration, the width of the patch is maintained constant and the length of the patch changes. The performance, which is the reading pattern, was studied and analyzed for the simulated configuration. The second approach then is to design a rectangular patch antenna with different dielectric substrates having different dielectric constants at an operating frequency of 2 GHz and the thickness of the substrate is constant for all cases of 1.5 mm. Here, three different dielectric materials are chosen. They are the RIF 5880, FR4, and aluminum, whose dielectric constants are 2.24 and 9.8 respectively. <laughs>